the house. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was, I was going to say it. The guy he described couldn't be here, and so I'm here in, in his place. <laughs> so good to be here at City Reach Church in Reading, worshiping you. Man, Woo, the presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. So good to be here with you on these week of services leading up to Pentecost Sunday, this coming Sunday, and I understand it's been going great with Pastor Josh on Sunday and Monday night, and just uh, the praise with worship last night, the Reading House of Prayer here, just worshiping the Lord and praying and bringing forth the intercession and the prophetic proclamations tonight is about deliverance. I understand tomorrow night is, is healing, and you just have great things leading up to uh, this coming Sunday and beyond. And, uh, you know, we just believe that God's going to do exactly what uh, you guys are expecting him to do tonight. It's deliverance night. Amen. We sang about freedom, 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 freedom. Amen. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. You know, Pastor CJ was speaking about thinking. You know, I preached the message on, on Sunday in New York, uh, and it was about the several things, but the woman with the issue of blood and, and from Mark chapter 5, and, and, you know, it says she had had this for 12 years, and it caused her much suffering, much suffering because of issues longstanding in her life. And she went to everything the world had to offer, all of the doctors, you know, and praise God for what, you know, God enables us to do, man, uh, medical professionals. And it's amazing the things that, that man can do. That's because we have an amazing God that created us with this ability. But God is the one who gets all the glory and honor and praise. He's the healer. Amen. And so she went to all the doctors and she didn't get better. She only got worse. Then she heard about Jesus. It says, then she heard about Jesus. And she thought, she heard about Jesus and she thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. And so she did whatever she had to do to press through the throng of people that was around Jesus to touch his clothes and immediately she was healed. It says she could feel in her body that she was freed from her suffering. That's good. You know, if we if you read on in Mark into chapter 6, we can see Jesus coming on to the shores of, of Genesaret after he had walked on the water and got into the boat with his disciples who were straining at the oar. And it said the people recognized him there. And they brought out all of their sick, and they begged and they pleaded with them that they could just touch the edge of his garments, that they would be healed, and they were all healed. And so this woman, who heard about Jesus and changed her thinking, and she thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Well, somebody else heard about that. A whole bunch of people heard about that. And when Jesus showed up, they said, that's the guy. If we can just touch his clothes, we'll be healed. And they were healed. And tonight I believe God's going to do something in your life that's going to be so significant and powerful that other people are going to receive the same thing. Their faith is going to grow because of what God's going to do in you tonight. I love it. See, God brings us from faith to faith and glory to glory. The new covenant is ever increasing glory. It doesn't get less, it gets more. God's got more tonight than ever before. Isn't that amazing? Tonight's about deliverance. In Mark in chapter 16, starting in verse 9, we can see that on the first day of the week when he rose early in the morning, he appeared to Mary Magdalene, it says, out of whom he had cast out seven demons. 
I don't know if any of you got seven demons in here tonight. But if you do, Jesus is up to the test because there's no one greater than our God. Amen? In Mark chapter 5, Jesus set a man free that was living among the tombs. And, you know, he had a spirit called legion. Number, 2,000 pigs rushed down the mountainside and were drowned when Jesus cast the demons out of him. So I don't think you have 2,000 demons in anyone tonight, but if you do, Jesus is up to the task because there's no God greater than our God. Amen? At the end of Mark 16, starting in verse 15, Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the good news. Preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. But then he said, in these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. Hallelujah. They will speak in other tongues or in new tongues. They will pick up vipers or deadly snakes and not be hurt. They can drink deadly poison and not be hurt. That they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And so they went out and they preached the good news. The word of God says Jesus worked with them and confirmed the message with signs and wonders. Do you believe that the Lord is going to confirm the preaching of his word tonight? By doing whatever it is that you need in your life. You see, it's the anointing. That destroys the yoke of bondage. And the anointing is in the house tonight. Hallelujah. And I'm going to share that scripture a little bit more. But I want to get into the body of my message here. A I, I, few, few weeks ago, a few Friday nights ago, I, I preached a message at the north side at City Ridge Church in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, by the Pittsburgh. i watch my peas with this microphone, huh? In Pittsburgh. And as I was praying about tonight, and thank you, Pastor C.J. and Joy, for inviting me and for, for having me. That's my beautiful wife, Teresa, over there. It's my only wife, and she happens to be beautiful. Amen. As I was praying about this night, I really felt that this message that I had preached was really a deliverance message and just tweaked it a little bit for our purposes tonight. So if it's all right with you, I want to bring it forth. and. The main scripture is Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Can we pray once more? Lord God, thank you for your presence in this house. Thank you for drawing each and every one of these precious people, like Lord, your people, your sons and daughters, into this sanctuary tonight, Lord God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the supernatural ministry of your Holy Spirit that brings the demonstration of your awesome power, Lord God Almighty. You are the deliverer. You're the Savior, the Redeemer, the deliverer. Hallelujah. And we thank you for freedom in the house tonight. Lord God, let every chain of bondage, Lord God, fall. Every addiction, Lord God, every long-standing issue, whatever it might be, Bow, hallelujah, to the mighty name of Jesus and be demolished under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. At this particular point in Joshua chapter 3, Israel had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because they fainted when God had brought them to the promised land. You see, God brought a mighty deliverance to set them free from 400 years of slavery in Egypt. 400 plus. I don't think anybody here has been in slavery or bondage or bound for 400 years, but if you happen to be, Jesus is up to the test because there's no God greater than our God. Amen? But they had been slaves all of that. That's all they knew. They were in bondage. 
for over 400 years, and God sent 10 plagues and did signs and wonders and set them free, and they came out of bondage. And God brought them to the Red Sea and opened it up and brought them through, and that's amazing. But it's not enough to come out of bondage. We got to go into all that God has for us. We got to go in and take the promised land. We have to take our inheritance in Christ. We have to live the life that God created us to live. And so they came through the Red Sea, and then they came to the edge of the Jordan. And God was ready for them to go in, but they weren't ready to go in. If you know the story, Moses sent out 12 spies. They spied, uh, spied out the land for 40 days. They saw that it was indeed everything and more that God had declared that it would be, a land flowing with milk and honey. Not only was there honey, they brought back grapes the size of a Buick. And oh, God, they had fruit. I mean, it was a good land. God didn't lie about this. He understated the blessing. But there were giants in the land. And so they were afraid. Ten of the spies came back with a bad report. Yeah, it's terrific, but we can't take it because there's not really. Not what God said. What kind of thinking is that? That's not deliverance thinking. That's bondage thinking. That's Egypt thinking. That's not promised land thinking. Joshua and Caleb said, oh, no, no. We can take it. Yeah, there's giants. But we can take it if we'll believe God. But they didn't, so they wandered around for 40 years. And now that whole generation dropped off. They died. They died in the desert. And so this group of people that's with Joshua right now is pretty much the ages, I don't know, from zero to 40, I guess 60. Everybody that was 20 years and over when they came out. That's so six, Joshua's got a crew that's 60 and under here. You know, Moses lived to 120, Joshua to 110. 60 is pretty young. Amen? I'm not 60 yet, so I'm not even middle-aged. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. He's got a young crew. Most of them didn't see the Red Sea open up. They heard about it plenty of times. Probably more times than they wanted to hear about it. Yeah, he opened up the Red Sea, but why didn't you go in? Finally, they get to this place now where they're camped along the Jordan outside of opposite Jericho, ready to go in and take the promised land. Out of bondage, ready to go in and live the life God really wanted them to live as a kingdom of priests, representing the Lord, driving out the unlawful inhabitants from the land, driving out giants off of mountains. And Joshua said, consecrate yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things in the land. See, I, I believe in order to really go into all that God has for us, there, there's a matter of consecration. Let me define that for us. Cut the consecrate is to devote or set apart uh, anything for the worship or the service of God. To set apart for the purposes and service of the Lord, that you're dedicated to something, you're devoted to something. So consecrate yourselves as Devote yourself to that which God has set you apart for. You see, consecrate means to set apart. The Lord has already set us apart. Psalm 4, 3 says, Know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. Jeremiah 1, verses 4 through 5, the prophet said, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Let me tell you something. If you're living in anything less than what God has created for you to live, you're living under someone else than the Lord. God set you apart for something amazing. If you're living in less than that, 
you're not living in what God has set you apart for. He called you from the womb. The devil didn't call you from the womb. No bondage called you from the womb. No man or woman, no government called you from the womb. God called you from the womb. He set you apart and called you out of the womb for amazing things. God wants to do amazing things in your life. Change your thinking. Well, I can only do this much. My education is this, so I can only do this much. My, my family background is this, so I can only expect to, to rise to this level. Says who? The devil? He's a liar. Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow I will do amazing things among you. Hallelujah. First Chronicles 23, 13 says, Aaron was set apart, he and his descendants forever, to consecrate the most holy things, to offer sacrifices before the Lord, to minister before him, and to pronounce blessings in his name. So they're speaking about the, the Old Testament priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood. But in the New Testament, we're all priests of the Most High God. When we come to Jesus... We're a royal priesthood. God expects us to pronounce blessing in his name. God expects us to touch things and make those things holy, not to be defiled by that which is unholy, but to, you know, New Testament, Old Testament, you touch by you can't touch a leper, you're, you're defiled. New Testament, you touch a leper, the leper is cleansed. Amen. God wants to do amazing things. He wants you to be free. Free to be who he created you to be. Free to be yourself in Christ Jesus. You don't have to be anybody else. You don't have to be me. It's not easy being me. <laughs> it's just the extra reason. It's not easy living with me. God wants you to enjoy you being Christ in you. There's nobody else like you. Hallelujah. It had to be you. Somebody wanted a song there, so that's why I went into it. <laughs> Tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Let me just define amazing for a second. Uh, amazing means that you're surprised. It's greatly surprising. You're filling people with astonishment. You see, you're we're starting to take cities for God. You're taking cities for God, not just Reading, Reading and beyond. I believe God's going to put a deliverance anointing on some people in this house tonight. We're world changers. We're city takers. Amen. Amazing, greatly surprising things that will fill people with, with astonishment. I love Reading. Can I tell you I love Reading? It's the reason I just moved back into Reading from Pittsburgh. Because we'll be traveling all around ministering to City Reach churches and in other churches as well. And, you know, we had a place here. I believe, I still believe God's got greater and greater plans for you. Hallelujah. Keep pressing in, man. This, you got it going on here. You have got it going on in this church, on this southeast side. God's doing great things in red. So here they are. Ready to go in and take the promised land. This is the message from the Lord through Joshua. Consecrate yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Let me read a couple more scriptures here. Joshua 4, 23 and 24. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we crossed over. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. And then in Joshua 3, 10, and 11, this is how you will know 
that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Kyrgyzites, Amorites, and Jebusites. See the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. See, there was a whole bunch of enemies, a whole bunch of evil across the Jordan River, but God says, I'm going to drive it all out. Whatever you're fearing, God, God says, I'll drive that thing out. What are you afraid of that for? God can drive that thing out in, in, a, in a blink of an eye. He says, because my presence will go before you. The Ark of the Covenant will go before you. We need to be a people that follow the presence of God. The presence of God is in this house. We need the presence of God. The devil don't want to hang around the presence of God. <laughs> if he was, he'd still be in the throne room leading worship. So if you're in the presence of God, guess what? You're doing pretty good. You're free. You're unoppressed, unhindered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so how do we consecrate ourselves? I'm going to share three or four things. I'm not sure which. <laughs> I might as well just throw the four out there, right? Where are we going? We're here already, right? I want to speak about being cleansed, being filled, being tested, and being covered. And in those, I want to speak about the blood, the oil, the fire, and the glory. Those are four things that were used to consecrate things. The Old Testament. And there was the four things that were also present in the Holy of Holies or in the holy place or in the, the tabernacle of God in the wilderness where his glory dwelt, where they could see the pillar of fire at night and the cloud of glory in the day. That which set them apart from every other nation, that which the other nations feared. When, they, when Jericho, with its great mighty walls, they were afraid. They were melting in fear inside those walls because they heard about the God of Israel. They probably could see the fire at night and the glory of the day. What's going on over there? Got a fireworks show happening? Not the 4th of July yet? So I want to speak about the blood, the oil, the fire, the glory. Be cleansed. Be filled. In Exodus 29, 21, it says, Take some blood from the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his garments and on his sons and their garments. Then he and his sons and their garments will be consecrated. So they used blood to consecrate the priests. Blood speaks of cleansing. Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6 says, He has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and Father. His blood frees us from all sin. See, it cleanses us from all sin. It blots out all sin. Isn't that amazing? The blood of Jesus is so powerful. It has not lost its power. The greatest cleansing agent in the universe, the blood of Jesus Christ, also sets us free from our sins. It cleanses us and sets us free from our sins so that we can be a kingdom of priests to serve the Lord our God. To bring his message, his fame all over. See, it's not just about us. That's another way we need to change our thinking. Well, I just need this. I want to be... God wants to set us free because he wants to make us deliverers. Amen? Jesus said, it's good for you that I go because then the Holy Spirit's going to come and you're all going to go around setting captives free, healing the sick, casting out demons, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead. We need to start thinking bigger than ourselves in our own little world.
think that's what keeps us in bondage sometimes. We're so closed in. We're so caught up with our own stuff. God is so much bigger than our stuff. And his kingdom is so much bigger than just us. There's no limit to what God can do in your life, in your family, in your life. He's changing your lineage. He's changing your legacy. That blood frees us from our sins. If there is a sin that's been besetting you and you just can't shake free of it, man, the blood of Jesus is sufficient to set you free. Love and Revelation, it says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And that's from the accuser of the brethren. You see that the, the enemy, the devil, that he's up there at the throne of God saying about you. And God's having none of it. Jesus will have none of it. Jesus is advocating before you before you. How do we overcome the accuser of the brethren by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony? Hallelujah. Be consecrated by the blood. Be set apart by the blood of Jesus Christ. When the blood of, the, of Jesus is on you, you are set apart for an amazing life. Hallelujah. Contemplated whether I should share this here or not. <laughs> All right. By popular demand, Second Chronicles 29, 5. It says, Listen to me, Levites. Consecrate yourselves now and consecrate the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Remove all defilement from the sanctuary. We are the sanctuary of the Most High God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the blood of the Lamb will get all of those defilements out of there. We need to say, I don't want anything that defiles. If I went into 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I could speak about, come out from among them and be separate. God says, I'm, I'm going to be your God, and you're going to be my people. You'll walk with me, I'll walk with you. Therefore, since we have these promises, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit out of reverence for God. We don't need to be defiled by the world. We're purifying agents in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Mm. Be cleansed by the blood. The blood will set you free. That blood will remove all defiles. You'll never be the same. Next, be filled. Speaks about the oil. The oil speaks about the anointing. But, you know, going back to that blood for a second, that blood was placed on the mercy seats of the Ark of the Covenant in the, Mo in the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle. And the high priest would go in there. There was also oil that was to be placed in lamps right outside of there. And those, that oil need to be filled and that, that those lamps needed to be burning at all times. We need to be filled. We're the light of the world. We're the lamps of the Lord. And it's the oil of the Holy Spirit that enables us to light up the world. Amen? Leviticus 8.12 says he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate. Exodus 40 verse 9 even said, Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it, consecrate it and all its furnishings, and it will be holy. The oil of the anointing, the oil of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 10.27, and I alluded to this early. But it says, and it shall come to pass on that day. 
I'm going to get my reading glasses or I have a, 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 a Rosetta Stone so I can. I'll try it one more time. And it shall come to pass on that day that the burden shall be taken away from off your shoulders and the yoke from off your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It's great to be cleansed, but we need to be filled. We need to be filled. Jesus said, if you cast a demon out of somebody, those demons, they're going to roam around in arid places looking for another, another resting place. Then they're going to go back and say, you know, let's go back to where we just got kicked out of and see what's happening over there. That was a pretty happening place. And they go back and they find that the place is swept and clean, but it's not filling. And they go and they bring seven worse than them. And the state of that person is worse than it was before. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled to the measure of the fullness of Christ. Filled with all of God that's available to us. And it's all of Him. Some of you are afraid of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I think. I know some of the people are. Maybe not in this house. Probably not in this house. But there are people that are afraid. They're afraid of the Holy Spirit, afraid of speaking in tongues, afraid of looking crazy. <laughs> Look at the world. Look at Walk around the streets for a few minutes. It's the rest of the world that's crazy. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're in your right mind. Hallelujah. I needed to get out of my mind. My mind was in, getting me in trouble. It's the mind of Christ that we need. Christ is the anointed one. He said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Recovery of sight to the blind. Freedom for the captives. Release for the oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord's reign. We have the same anointing. We have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's that oil of God we need to be filled. Jesus was giving a parable of his second coming, and he spoke about ten virgins, five of them wise, five of them foolish. The wise ones were the ones that had enough oil for their lamps. They didn't run out. We need to be filled with the oil. Of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next is be tested. Be cleansed. Be filled. Be tested. And it's fire that tests. You see, there were a couple of things with fire. When you went into the tabernacle, there was an altar of sacrifice where burnt offerings were sacrificed. There was also the altar of incense, an incense that needed to be burned in the fire Needed to, the fire could never go out on the altar. The incense really speaks about the prayers of the saints, a special incense. That's a whole other message. But in Exodus chapter 29, verses 38 and 39, it says, This is what you are to offer on the altar regularly each day. Two lambs a year old. Offer one in the morning and the other at twilight. It says, For the generations to come, this burnt offering is to be made regularly at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. And listen to what God said. There I will meet you and speak to you. Well, my Bible in Romans chapter 12 tells us in view of God's mercy to offer ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to the Lord. This is our worship. We need to climb on the altar daily regularly. Be that living sacrifice for the Lord. Allow the fire of God to consume us, to consume the junk that can be in us. But you know what? It's, it's the, the fires of, of trials and testings that cleanse us and, and cause us to be able to carry greater glory in our life. First Peter 4 verses 12 through 14 says, Dear friends, 
Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. You know, we kick and scream and complain about the the trials, the testings, the tribulations. Peter says, why do you think it's strange that you're going through this? You know, your faith is more precious than pure gold, and gold is refined by fire. Why not our faith? Hallelujah. I love the I love the story, the event in in Daniel about the, the, the three Hebrew young men that they were about to be thrown into the fiery furnace because they wouldn't worship the pagan gods of the Babylonians and the, the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they turned that furnace up seven times hotter than it normally was. Nebuchadnezzar gave them one more chance. I'm gonna, we're going to sound the music. If you if you worship, bow down to the image. Great. If not, in you go. <laughs> Didn't move them. What a test. What a test of faith. There they were. I mean, they were strangers in that land. Yet God was blessing them. Now this test comes. Are they going to deny the Lord or are they going to stand strong? James chapter 1 says, kind of pure joy when you experience trials of all kinds. Testing of your faith produces perseverance, and perseverance must finish its work, that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. See, God doesn't want you to lack anything. Then it goes on to say, blessed is the one that perseveres under trials. You'll receive that crown of life. You know what? We were speaking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one that baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire. We need the fire of God in us. Romans chapter 12 also says, never be lacking in, in, your, in your spiritual fervor. Never be lacking in zeal and in your spiritual fervor. And we need to be white hot the fire of God. Hallelujah. We always say, show, me, show us your glory. We want greater glory, but we don't want to be tested. and We don't want the, the trials that cause us to carry greater glory. You look at people and you wonder, how, how is it that they shine? How is it that they, they, they carry themselves, that they, that they carry glory? They walk into a room and they the atmosphere has changed because they've been through it. They've been through stuff. You're going through stuff right now. Praise the Lord. He's going to bring you through it. It's not going to defeat you. It's not going to cause your end. It's going to cause a greater beginning in your life. Cause you to carry greater glory. Minister in greater power and anointing. Greater glory. And then the fourth thing is to be covered. And that speaks of the glory of God. We need a cover. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had a covering of the glory. When they sinned, they knew they were naked. And guess what? Fig leaves don't do the job. That the glory of God does. We need to be covered with the glory. Cleansed and set free by the blood. Filled and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Tested by the fire of God and filled with that fire of the Holy Spirit. And covered in His glory. Surrounded in His presence. Man, the enemy can't break through the glory of God. 
There's no addiction. There's no issue that you're going through in your life. There's no stronghold that can stand against the power of Jesus Christ. I don't care what your mindset has been for how many years. Jesus Christ can change that mindset. He can dismantle that faulty way of thinking and give you the mind of Christ. If that demoniac in Mark 5, with one word from Jesus, it says he was dressed and in his right mind. Hallelujah. Exodus, well, let me read you. Exodus chapter 29, verse 43. It says, There also I will meet with the Israelites, and the place will be consecrated by my glory. Let me read, I guess, uh, starting in verse. That's good news. It says, I will consecrate that place with my glory. I believe this place is consecrated with the glory. And in Exodus 40, verses 34 and 35, then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord had filled the tabernacle. I can go on and on, but I'd rather see the Holy Spirit move right in this day. Right here. I believe he's going to do that. I don't know if we have some music to play in the background or whatever. I'd like to ask us all to stand right now, if you can. God's going to set some, some, some things right. He's going to heal some deep, long-standing things like that woman with the issue of blood. You've been suffering for 12 years or more. And you'll feel in your body and in your spirit, I've been freed from my suffering. Maybe it's a long-standing wound. You never realized how deep it was. And it opened up and it's causing all kinds of havoc in your life. Maybe it's an addiction that you've been trying to shake free from. Maybe it's strongholds of the mind that, that just have a ceiling over your head and you just feel, I can't bust through. You need breakthrough in your life. Breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough is in the house tonight. Hallelujah. Shoot. First, I just want to give the invitation. I, I, just in case there's someone here tonight, you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior. That's the starting place to the best life you can possibly live. And then living with Him forever and ever and ever in His presence. Maybe you've been living in sin and you've never been cleansed and never received Christ as your Savior. I don't know. Maybe you've drifted in here on a Wednesday night in Southeast Reading and you need the salvation of the Lord. If that's you, Jesus were to come back right now and you were not ready. You know that you would be you would spend eternity separated from him in utter darkness rather than with him in utter glory. On the count of three, I just want you to raise your hand. His blood will cleanse your sins and blot them out, and he'll set you free from those sins, and he wants to fill you up, cause you to live a new life. If any man is in Christ, if any woman is in Christ. They're a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. So if you want to receive Christ as your Savior tonight, the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart right now, and you say, this is me. I need this. This is my night on the count of three. Raise your hand. One, two, three. Is there anyone here tonight? Anyone? Just had to give that invitation. I don't see any hands. Teresa, would you come up? I know Pastor CJ, Joy, if you have, you guys want to pray 